Hello, this is Casper Anderson and welcome to another Umbraco tutorial. Today we're going to be looking at a topic that is pretty cool, if you ask me, and a topic that has taken me a while to understand, and I'm not sure I fully understand it yet, but I, I feel I'm getting close anyway. Um, it's going to be like a three-part video altogether, and I'm going to do the first part today. So the first part is custom sections, and the second and third part will be a custom tree to belong to that section. So for example, if you're building your own uh, something for a website or for your c company, something like that, you can create your own section in, in the back end of Umbraco. So, yeah. Anyway, I will show you what I mean, because uh, it took me a while to, uh, to start with to just understand fundamentally what a section was, because um, I thought the tree was the section and the section was the tree. Oh, yeah, exactly, I thought they were switched. So let's just dive in a minute. Um, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. There we go, and yeah, might as well save. Okay, so a quick thing to note. Oh, let me just close this. There we go. I thought this here, I thought this was a section and then this was a tree, because it, it made sense to me. But it's actually the other way around. This is the section and this is the tree. So, of course, the section we're going to define in a minute, and I'll show you how. And the tree is something that comes from a database, and I'll show you how to create that, and how to store values, how to delete values, how to update values, but the basic CRUD operations. And, uh, well, yeah, the rest is what you need to do in your project, or whatever you want to play around with. So, uh, let's get started. It's actually not that bad, um, just to start with here. The first thing we're going to do is we're going to define a new... Uh, a new plugin. So what we're going to do is going to add one here and add a new folder, and we'll call this um, example, just to make it easier. And in here, this is the way I like to structure it. I create a new folder and I call it application. Uh, yeah. Okay. Just yeah. Just uh, it's uh, application. There we go. Because it's just one application inside this one. Unless you want to have more, but I don't see why. So application, and then we're going to add a new class. And this class we will call the person section. There we go. Okay, so we have a completely empty class. The way this works is first, let's just open up that. We want to inherit from the i application. There we go. Just use umbraco.interfaces. Boom, that will open. And then we need to decorate this with one thing, and that is. Oh, not like that. Try again, that is these brackets. We want to decorate it with the application. And then we're just going to open it. And uh, oh, why is that not working? Let's just see a minute. Um, okay, let's just start a minute. I think. Ah, that's because it thinks this is the thing we're talking about, but we're not. So, uh, but yeah, that, that will, that's, yeah, okay, you'll see that in a minute. So, first, okay, let's just get this to work. Well, what we need to do is say using, and then umbraco, and then dot business logic. So, this one, I believe, yeah, there we go. And that will suddenly highlight our application. If you don't want this to happen to you, then what you can do is you can name the folder applications with an S then this will also change to an S and these two won't conflict but now it is uh, casted anyway so first we, we want to uh, let's just close it and then open okay so you see the first first thing is a string alias and this is the alias of what our project name will be and because our folder name is example we should call this example so we will there we go so comma and then the name is also example. There we go. And then what icon do we have? Icon is a bit special. It's not uh, like a, a pathway to an image somewhere on the server. It's a, a CSS class. If you've ever worked with something like Font Awesome or uh, Glyphicans, I think they're called, stuff like that, then this is kind of what, what we're after. I can't remember what it's called, but I'll show you how to figure that out in a minute. But we're just going to use the one called Icon, 
dash people. Oh, don't know why that came. And the sort order. So if you think about it for a second, we look here. We have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, and then one all the way down here. But let's just uh, inspect this for a minute. And I'll just grab my pointer and look at the first one. You see, the first one here is the second. Uh, the section element starts here. That's the whole thing. And then we have the application that starts, and then we have uh, the sections. You will, and then each li element is a section. So if you look in here, on the a tag, you can see that the um, maybe that's inside. There we go. Section icon is a tray content. If we have a look at that, we can see that it comes from a font family called. We should be able to see it. Hmm, maybe it's inside. There we go. Ico Moon. Not something I know of, but uh, whoever knows it might know what else you can put there. If not, you can probably find out. Anyway, that's how to figure that out. And, uh, yeah, the rest is uh, not something we really want to have a look at, but yeah, that's just that. Um, so, yeah, that is... Uh, let me just open up our Vision Studio. So, yeah, the sort order is going to be 15, because the help one is not 8, it's number... 3 billion was probably some, or some other, I don't know, but it's always made to be at the bottom. But we also, also want to make sure that if Umbraco one day add a number 8 or a number 9, that ours doesn't conflict. We'd like ours to be in the bottom. That's just nice, to be honest. Um, differentiate, yeah, um, not differentiating, um, what's it called? Making sure that Umbraco is Umbraco and ours is ours, so that we don't, you know, mix with what's in the middle of Umbraco. Just a, a nice thing. Anyway, this is actually all there is to it. So let's comp uh, build our project. Build it, went fine, and go back. So if we reload, of course, suddenly you'll be thinking, wait, was that it? And yes, it was actually, but there's nothing here. So what we have to do first is go to our user. There we go. And you'll see here, of course, there's translations we can enable. And after I reload, the translation will pop up. And we can put example. And suddenly here we have the example. Only thing is, right, you see these um, brackets with example inside. Reason for this is the translation. And for that we want to add a key. So let's grab, uh, yes, yeah, just a lowercase example. So where we want to go is, um, let's see, the thing is in Braco. Let me think a minute. Or maybe it's in Braco Client. Ah, I think I know where it is. It's not even there. I think it's in Config. Oh, let me just remember a minute. It's still... I think it's... No, it's not that one. Shame. There's one called languages. Um, language, language, language. I uh, should be able to find it. Just a second. Oh, sorry. Yeah, there it was. Config, and then language. There we go. So what we want to have a look at at the moment is. What language is the user that I am logged in with viewing this as? And it is English United Kingdom. What I would call ENGB. So, it's not US. So if we grab this... Um, ah, okay, maybe it is US or... Did I grab the wrong node? Just a second. Um, yeah, I might have done okay, so it's not here, but now we know what to look for, and Braco. Um, translations. Nope, sorry, again. Braco client must be... I just missed it. I'm a bit tired at the moment, so that must be why. Okay, let me 
me just go find a minute. This is embarrassing. Just going to put this on the second page of me so you don't have to see me type for it. Uh, da -da -da -da. Really weird. I was pretty sure it wasn't here. Okay, I'll just go look for everything then. Just update this a minute. There we go. Config, ah, and language, there we go, okay, right, sorry. <laughs> okay, so, yeah, so to find it, away with all this, we go into Umbraco, and then Config, and then we have all the languages down here, so we open EN, so there's EN and there's ENUS, and we of course EN. Then we want to go down to sections, we see area A, list change, doc type and content, we want to find one called sections. Um, let me just see. Da, 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 da. We could also search for it. Might as well go down so you know where it more or less is located. And should be there in a minute. Or maybe I jumped it. Template. Template editor. Tree headers. I must have missed it. So sections, this one. And you can see we have form, we have the help, we have the uh, content, all that stuff. What we're going to want to do is just add a key, give it the alias of our lowercase example, and then the name is, um, this, yeah, okay, for example, let's call it example for now, but of course, in your project you can call it whatever you want. Let's just build it. Okay. And go back into Braco. Let's reload it. And see there again. This is a problem with the ca um, cache. I'm pretty. I'm pretty sure that is what is uh, causing problems here. So let's do what we did before in the last episode. Go to the app data. Clear the cache. And the temp. Right. That should take care of that. And also I need to clear my browser cache to be certain. <laughs> and there we go. Now it works. So see we have example and of course there's nothing here but it's there. Um, yes that was the first video. In the next video I will be creating the tr the um, I think yeah let's first create the tree and then afterwards we'll create the main uh, dashboard which is also quite easy actually so yeah thanks a lot for watching and uh, hope you learn more about Umbraco and you everyone's enjoying this uh, have a good evening